Hi. Thanks, Greg. You did a great explanation. I probably don't really need to uh, speak about this anymore. Um, <laughs> I did it well enough. Uh, th there is one change in that introduction. I removed raster I.O. from the process. Um, but you can go to the GitHub project and figure that out. Uh, I seem to do a lot of presentations on web mapping. Um, I have no idea why. Um, but I think it's always because I have a need for web mapping, and web mapping um, solutions out there usually don't fit my needs. Um, it's not because they're bad tools. It's because I work in custom projections almost exclusively, and I've yet to find a really solid tool that will do uh, web mapping tiling in custom projections. So I'm always scrambling to actually build a tool, essentially. So uh, every year I do an update, I build a new tool, I present on it, and um, then I go and build a new tool, um, <laughs> which is a terrible model. Um, so how do I go forward on this? There we go. Last year, um, I did a presentation on a very similar process. It was very ambitious on my part. I think I probably bit off more than I can chew, and I abused the file format. Uh, but basically, what I did was I wanted to replace the MB tile with the COG. Uh, and I wanted to do that by using QGIS uh, as my base um, modeler. And then I wanted to go directly to a cog. And I wanted to maintain um, all the things the tile mill did in the past, which was basically accept zoom rules so you could have zoom zero with something happening and all the way down to like zoom 12 and something will be happening as well um, as far as changes on the maps go. Um, I thought that was a really great project. I was quite proud of it. Um, when I talked to GDAO, they said, yes, you're abusing the cog format and maybe this isn't the best way to go. Um, so. I stomped my feet because I was like, this is a great idea. Um, and what I decided to do was um, pull the method back to something that was quite traditional, which is raster tiles. Uh, most people in web mapping are probably familiar with raster tiles. If you're not, um, you don't have to raise your hand, uh, but come ask me afterwards and I will explain what raster tiles are. It's not a big deal. So the, the method itself, again, what I was trying to replace uh, because the tools are out of date was the tile mill map proxy method that I was using in the past. There's a million ways to do web mapping. Um, I used tile mill as my styler in the past, and I used map proxy as my renderer. Um, and it worked really well, but those tools are now out of date, um, and they're unsupported. So we needed a better, so, well, I, I needed a better solution. Um, what I'm not going to talk about is, uh, in, in this presentation is what's a better method, vector tiles, cogs, raster tiles. I don't want to have that discussion anymore. Um, there's a diversification that, ever, in my opinion, everyone needs to work with when it comes to web mapping. Raster tiles still serve a purpose in web mapping. Um, vector tiles serve a particular purpose that is very important as well, and cogs are starting to um, fill a niche in, in web mapping as well. Uh, and, and they're getting bigger. I, I still think there, there needs to be some work on uh, the speed of delivery. But thanks to people at Linz, um, Blaine Chard, who's not here, um, he did some work around Map Libra and speeding that process up. But I'm not here to talk about the COG method anymore. We're back to raster tiles. Um, what I'm going to really talk about is the method that I've been working on and developing um, over the past year. Um, and then I'm going to talk some of the features that I built into it and some of the plan development that I have. And then I'm going to make a plea to everyone here um, to uh, either take the method and make it better and put it into your processes or pay me lots of money to do it. So um, we'll start from there. Again, I'm not really talking about like uh, whether raster tiles are dead or not. I was told that for years, and I, I never believed it. And it's because no matter what I do in my work, 
I'm always using raster tiles for something. Um, if you split your data in web mapping to something called slow moving and fast moving data, slow moving data is something that isn't going to change very much um, and it's likely to be translated into a base map. So um, in base maps, in my opinion, um, it's great to go to raster tiles to actually do that because um, they're quick, they're robust, um, they're not that hard to create. They're the original form, um, not the original format, but they're, they're a well-tested format that actually is out there. Um, I think the primary reason of what I did in this method um, and why I developed it is I was tired of breaking changes um, in web mapping processes. So the old tile mill process, um, what I would do in the past is I would first start in QGIS and I would get an idea of how my data worked. Um, and then I would do some base sketching in QGIS to figure out how I, I wanted my base map to look and um, the design on it and how things might work on different zoom scales. And then I had to translate all those roles into Cardo CSS and TileMail. And then from Cardo, C the Cardo CSS, I had to go to a map, Mapnik XML. Um, and then from the Mapnik XML, you fed that into Map Proxy and then you got raster tiles out the other end. Um, it worked at the time, but I was tired of this breaking change and I was tired of the fact that tools for web mapping were really just, no one was supporting them anymore. And I really wanted an editor that was going to be out there. I wanted something that was going to be reliable and something that I could work on. So for about a year, what I've been really looking hard at is QGIS is a really great editor. Um, it's a really great modeler. It handles data really, really well. It handles projections really well. And the question I always had to myself is, why can't I be using QGIS just for this? Now, before anyone says, oh, but there were raster tiling tools out there, I agree. But what those, tile, what those raster tilers didn't do is something that I need all the time, and this is the other thing I wanted to develop, custom projections. Um, I've been asked to do maps all the time in NZTM. Um, I did some work for the New Zealand Geographic Board where I had to make something uh, for Antarctica, and there, there wasn't a tool out there that would easily do Antarctica uh, in custom projection. But I knew QGIS could handle that, and if all, all I had to do was figure out how to get from the QGIS project to the, to the raster tile cache. Easy as, right? I, I, <laughs> I found it was actually much harder. So. Um, what I wanted, again, was just QGIS as my base. I wanted everything to run from Q QGIS. Another reason I wanted to run from QGIS was because um, when I'm doing visualization pro uh, products, I couldn't, in the past, I couldn't take TileMill and create my visualization products. I really had to go back to QGIS and TileMill for the web mapping and then back to QGIS for the visualization product. And that was creating visual breaks and things. So colors would be slightly changed and I had to remember all these rules. So now I have this one QGIS project and all I have to do is figure out how to do the, um, the web mapping itself. I'm not gonna get too much into the technical. I'm just gonna give you the high level. I have a Git repo. It's public, it's open. Anyone who wants to take the method and change or make um, issues on it, uh, I'm more than happy um, for you to come take the thing or give me an issue and if I can, I'll fix it. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and the last reason I did all this is I really wanted a better cloud op um, optimized process. So uh, n this is not the most exciting slide on the earth, but it's probably the most important slide on the earth of how I broke down the method and how I redeveloped the method. Primary steps in this process, you start with a QGIS project. That's what I have is the QGZ. Um, I'm guessing everyone in this room has worked with QGIS at some point, okay? We're in an open source conference. If you haven't worked with QGIS, um, let's talk. Um, <laughs> So you start with a QGIS project. Um, and within QGIS, if you want to add Zoom roles to your project, um, please do. Uh, and for people who are unfamiliar with Zoom roles, that might be something as simple as a road width that is getting wider as you're zooming in. Um, what we want to try and do in this method is capture that. Um, what I introduce in this method as well is something called a coverage JSON. Anyone who's worked with Map Proxy in the past um, is very familiar with coverage JSONs. 
um, but they were using a, a different file format. But a coverage JSON is really, really simple concept, but it's going to save you heaps of time and energy in web mapping itself. So what it is, it's an extent of where you want to map. It's as simple as that, but um, it's, uh, on the back end, it, it's actually a bit more difficult to try and figure out how that's actually going to happen. But what a coverage JSON is, is you develop this file um, and you point to an extent and you can do something as simple as only map the Wellington region. Or you can set up the coverage JSON file that you can map all of New Zealand and you can do the high level zooms just on the Wellington region or the Auckland region. This is a method that um, I implemented in the past uh, when we did the lens base map proof of concept. Um, and it's something that stuck with, it was stuck in my head, so I reintroduced this method on the process itself. Um, something that is really, uh, really hard to describe and figure out, um, but is necessary to this process is called something called a tile matrix JSON. This is what makes custom projections happen. I will talk to anyone um, afterwards about this. Here in New Zealand, we are extremely fortunate for Lens to have already developed this tile matrix JSON for us. What is a tile matrix JSON? It's basically a set of rules for web mapping um, and what happens at every zoom scale. And that is just really sim simply, what is the zoom scale? How many tiles make up that zoom, uh, make up that zoom scale? Uh, and what are the resolutions of each tile on that zoom scale as well? Um, I do have a method to develop this on my own. They're a pain in the butt, but there's probably about 20 standards um, that OGC has approved for around the world. So Antarctica has a tile matrix JSON already developed and all these things figured out. This is essential for custom projection web mapping. Um, and the implement, uh, implementation of it is really just the mathematics of looking at different um, parts of it and actually setting it up. So I introduced that into this process. Why did I do it? Well, if you have a QGIS project in NZTM um, and you just want to export raster tiles in NZTM, um, as long as you have the tile matrix uh, JSON available to you, uh, you can do that. Um, and then you can have a nice web map in NZTM. Um, the process to XYZ tile cache, um, I kind of have that in there because um, that's really the process I've developed so far right now. Um, when I'm talking about static raster tiles, I'm just talking about pre-rendering rendering tiles out. The process I developed for this uses the standard XYZ tile cache. Um, I am looking at developing methods for TMS uh, in other web formats as well, but right now I'm just going to XYZ tile cache. Um, processing, I, I, I put that in there. Um, the, the, re the reason I put that up there is um, when I developed this method, I was really getting sick and tired. I had to run like six steps and I had to do all these um, manual steps to get it done. And then I introduced the makefile uh, method and I have now everything down to just a single command line process. The command line process that I developed is pretty similar to all these old r rendering um, command line processes that you ran. So um, you give it a projection, you tell it where your QGIS file is, um, and then you, uh, you tell it w what zoom levels you actually want to run out. Um, and I have a version control in there uh, right now. I'm 50-50 on whether I'm gonna actually take that out. Uh, for anyone who's done web mapping, um, I think version control is actually incredibly important. Um, and that is for uh, reasons of you have a web map, it's running live, you want to replace the tiles. Um, and web mapping runs best through a CDN, so you can use the version control. Um, just see me afterwards if you want to know, know more why I think that's important. Features that I built into this, um, and uh, there, there will be more to come, but the features that exist right now, and it, to me, the most important one is custom projection. So I can easily do Antarctica, I can easily do the Arctic, I can easily do Canada now in its proper projection. Um, I do New Zealand in its proper projection, so it looks like New Zealand and not that weird WGS84 kind of stretch thing. Um, zoom rolls captured. Um, it, 
this was something that was lost when tile mill uh, kind of went away, but I brought it back. So you can have these complex dynamic base maps running in and out, and you can have zoom rules based in them as well. Um, the one thing that um, I'm kind of struggling with, and I'm going to put out a plea at the end of this, is I can do multi-core uh, processing on this and multi-core threading. Um, I am running into some issues with Mac, and I'm also running into some racing issues. And I unfortunately attacked Niall earlier uh, this week about with all these questions. And uh, yes, yeah, so, sorry about that. <laughs> um, Coverages, uh, I, I put coverages into this process. Um, I think they're actually quite important um, and they make your life much, much easier. You can reduce, um, we'll say New Zealand down to the uh, 500 scale is about 800 million tiles. With the use of coverages, you can limit that quite um, a lot and it's really, really helpful. Um, I do have WMTS in there. Um, I built a little tile service on myself and I'm running a, a WMTS service off of it. Um, I don't have an automated process for that, but I really want to get the autom automated process up and running. Uh, but um, WMTS, is, are most people in the room familiar with WMTS services? This will just allow you to build your own WMTS service uh, and using custom projections again as well. Um, I have this built in a Docker makefile method. The reason I built this into a Docker makefile method is that um, it's really helpful when you're doing um, web mapping itself and you're looking at producing 800 million tiles to scale that process on something like AWS. Um, if you have everything containerized on a Docker and you have everything set up as a single command, um, it makes your life infinitely easier. So you can launch um, these big machines and uh, just run a single command and run the process and you can leverage sometimes 96 cores if you need to leverage 96 cores. Um, and then that Docker makefile method um, just makes for an ease, ease of scaling as I have on there. Um, what's coming in the future? Um, hopefully after this speech, I'm going to get lots of work and lots of funding and I'm going to make that, that's what the future is going to be. Uh, but for right now, this is a labor of love on my part. Um, this is something that I've kind of been chipping in on over uh, now and again. Um, just over time, so upgrades are slow on it. Um, I, the, I have found, though, that I'm more inclined to make the upgrades on it if somebody's interested on a tool and using it. Um, I was working with someone at News Hub recently, and he asked for a few feature changes um, to potentially use it, so I actually went on it. But upgrades right now are really slow because um, I just do it when I want to do it. Um, what I do hope to do is this is, it's not really a mess, but it is kind of a mess uh, in the repo. It's just this one big giant Python script uh, running, and what I really want to do is try and make this much easier. Um, the, when I got into web mapping itself, um, the thing that frustrated me the most was how difficult uh, and how many steps you had to figure out. And what I'm trying to do is break this down into something that's much more easier that anyone should be able to use in the future. Um, I keep harassing Niall on this, um, but I really want a Cardo CSS language in the future. Uh, there is zero interest in that. I might be the only person on the planet who wants a Cardo CSS to, uh, styling language to return. Um, I might just have to end up writing it, but has anyone ever used Cardo CSS as a language? Yeah? Do you miss it? Do you care? Yeah. Yeah, um, it's it's something that I always really enjoyed writing. Um, I love QGIS, but I, I think setting zoom scales in QGIS is a bit clunky, and it's based on these scale numbers and uh, blah, blah, blah. And I know the difficulty of um, dealing with that, but I really want to see if I can get that language to come back and integrate with QGIS as well. Uh, I am working on a repo right now for custom matrix development. And um, that, that's going to be important. So if you do have a project, say, in the Caribbean, and you um, want to use the um, projection of that region, um, hopefully I will have a tool up soon that you can do custom matrix development. However, that said, someone who's already doing it and doing it really well is Linz. Um, they have a custom matrix development tool 
that they used um, to build an NZTM, and I did pull a lot of techniques out of that. Um, another big feature I hope to implement in the future is vector tile and custom projection. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to have the QGIS project uh, that makes the base map, and I'd like to be able to flag which vector t uh, files I want to go into vector tiles. So that's something we're looking at. On the fly rendering, I'm looking at on the fly rendering coming up right now. This is a static um, tiler. Eventually, what I'd like to do is be able to run this on a server, just like um, GeoServer or anything else, um, and do on the fly rendering so you don't have to pre render everything out. Uh, right now, I'm only doing 256 by 256 tiles. I have to rework my maths to do. Uh, more tile sizes because that's something that is um, you utilized quite a bit in web mapping. And I want to make uh, my own tile service. I want to compete with you guys on base maps. So, no, I, I don't want to compete with Linz, but I, I do want to have my own tile services set up because I'd like to try and get some of my base maps out into the media and different places as well, or just offer them to anyone in the world. That's, that's me. That's my email. There's the GitHub repo. Go steal, but not steal. Just take it and do whatever you want with it. Uh, and if you want something from it, um, yeah, put up an issue. And I'd be happy to try and help. Okay. Any questions for you? Down the back. G'day, Ian. Um, great presentation, mate. Um, I'm curious, do you find uh, like the per tile throughput, like the amount of time it takes to generate each individual tile, do you find that to be relatively static or do you find, depending on the projection, depending on the, the file, some variability in how long they take to process? Um, the variability I found, the biggest variability I found is in color. So um, the more weight that the PNG or the JPEG has coming out, um, in, in its color profile will actually slow it down. Um, and the other thing I found is actually the threading process that I implement. Some threading processes are faster than others. Uh, but other than that, though, th well, th th those have been the biggest factors um, in speed. Um, and sometimes distance uh, from your data how many places it has to run through to get where you're going. So I try, it sounds weird, but I try and put my data as close to where my process is going to be um, and embed it directly in sometimes. Do we have any other questions for you?